How's it going everybody? It's Ryan here going to do a review of the Precision Nutrition Chapter 1 and I'm going to do two, basically kill two birds with one so I'm going to study. I'm going to create content for my channel so that way for those that watch it on a regular basis you're going to get some interesting information, at least the first few minutes of it anyway, and then the rest will be, I guess will be interesting as well, but it will be uh, more geared towards passing the test because I need to pass the test by the end of the month. That's the deadline I've given myself. I've waited too long to pass this test. So um, hopefully someone out there who's trying to learn the uh, the precision nutrition, the precision nutrition certification level one finds this video useful. So let's dig into the material. So we're going over chapter one, cell structure and function. And uh, for those that watch my channel on a regular basis, I'm going to share the coolest part about this chapter that's actually applicable, or at least probably something you already know. I think a lot of us know what mitochondria is, but it's good to get a refresher. Sometimes we forget what it is. And if you don't use it day to day, or you're not one of those nutrition scientist type people, uh, my, knowing what mitochondria exactly does, sort of like it's kind of like whatever. Uh, but let me start reading. Mitochondria. Mitochondria are highly organized cellular organelles responsible for converting things like protein, carbohydrate, and fat into energy. Um, they convert the energy into adenosine triphosphate, or the famous ATP. This is what fuels muscles for strength, for endurance, for everything. Uh, much of the energy is stored in carbohydrates, protein, and fats. Is useless unless it's it's oxidized and used. So think of it like this: mitochondria are like mitochondria is like a bunch of little engines, and the more of these engines you have, the more energy you're going to be able be able to create, or more ATP. Uh, since this is, I'm reading basically what I underlined, which was interesting. Mitochondria generate power for the cell. In mitochondrial density in athletes, so here, here's I wrote this part is pretty cool. This is why we typically see an increase in mitochondrial density in elite athletes. They not only build more total mitochondria with training, they also build more mitochondria per unit of muscle mass. This helps the supply of ATP required for high level performance. Mitochondrial qualities also link to health and well-being. So I'll skip down here to the bottom. Um, this is, however, data suggests that different people may, t may make ATP at different rates even with the same oxygen consumption, electron transport chain activity. This is freaking cool because it just tells about basically genetic variation. The phenomena may be related to both a lower oxygen requirement and related lower food requirement for the same ATP yield as, as well as a lower production of reactive oxygen species, or ROS for short, or free radicals. So remember when you produce ATP, you produce free radicals, free radicals damage your body, they damage DNA. You see when oxygen is consumed the, in, the, in the production of ATP, reactive oxygen species are formed. These unstable molecules can cause quite a bit of cellular damage, including some pretty serious DNA damage. So it may be best to keep ROS production under control. So I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, I think this is one of the reasons why P, uh, why athletes, especially elite athletes or uh, endurance athletes, blood dope is to get more mitochondria because you put your blood back into your body. I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs of what blood doping is, but I do know that it basically you put your own blood into your body and it gives you more mitochondria, which basically gives you more engines to fuel your, your performance. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the summary. So, uh, the summary is pretty good because there's some little tidbits in here that you might find interesting. The trillions of cells in the human body work together to form tissues, organs, and organ systems. The total of all the activities taking place in these systems is what people refer to as metabolism. If you really think about the word metabolism, people say, slow your metabolism, your metabolism is slow, your metabolism is fast. But then if you ask anybody who doesn't have like a really good science background or even, even some random personal trainer, they'll, they won't even know how to explain what metabolism is. They'll give you some fluff BS answer. They can't give you a science answer. Uh, and it's, they'll just give you like, oh, it's basically how fast your body burns calories, which is true, but it doesn't really explain everything. Um, so it's it's more. So this is kind of a good sentence to explain what metabolism is. It's just all the processes in your body. Okay, number two, there are many levels of organization in the body, from microscopic atoms up to the fully functional organisms. Each level is necessary for optimal functioning of the next. Uh, number three, the food we eat interacts with small chemical reactions and processes taking place in our cells. This interaction, especially with our genetic material, determines our health. Number four, 
Um, arch number three, just repeating this last sentence, the interaction, especially with our genetic material, determines our health. So genetic material, your genes, right? They, everyone, uh, everyone is sort of the same but different because some people are allergic to certain foods, some people can't tolerate certain foods, and that genetic component, which is a big variable, will affect how you respond to food. Number four, food affects our health in four ways. Four ways. It provides energy. It provides metabolic cofactors, which is pretty complicated. It's incorporated into body structures, and it influences chemicals such as hormones and neurotransmitters. Okay, so I'll just briefly say that again, because I need to remember this. Provides energy, metabolic cofactors, into body structures and influences chemical reactions for hormones and neurotransmitters. Number five, our organelles which reside within our cells convert food into ATP and make proteins. Number six, our genetic information directs protein making signals. Our food can affect these signals as well as the quality of the proteins that are made. Number seven, the last one, enzymes and coenzymes are compounds necessary for nearly every cellular process in the body. Enzymes help reactions occur. So um, about five, a little bit over five, six minutes into the video now. Now I'm going to go basically over the stuff you need to do for to pass a test because I did take the test twice and I failed it twice. So um, you might want to learn from my mistake and not have to shell out 50 bucks when you have to retake the test. Uh, so this is really important. They want, to, they want you to know this chart and understand the organization of the body. So it says here, you know, organism all the way down to chemicals. I'm going to read these off. Well, I'll just, I can read it from here. Uh, organism organ systems, organs, tissue, cells, organelle, and chemical. All right, so they want you to know like what the levels are. So just, there's organisms, right? So that's the, that's the first one, right? The second one is organ systems. So organisms, obviously you, just a person or a organism. Then there's organ systems. Organ systems are comprised of the integumentary system, which is your skin, hair, nail, sweat glands. There's a skeletal system, your bones. There's the muscular system. There's a nervous system. That endocrine system, the circulatory system, the immune system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the urinary system, and the reproducti re reproductive system, right? So that there's a lot of systems in there, and they'll make you, they'll confuse your ass. They'll, they'll basically say, uh, which of these is like, which level is this at, or something like that. It'll basically make you think that one of the systems is one of the levels, you know, because the next level down from organ systems is organs, because uh, there's organ systems. So understand, like, for example, the the endocrine system consists of the hypothalamus, the pineal, pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the liver, and the pancreas, and the kidney, adrenal glands, testes, ovaries. So, it's a, it's a, so you have these systems, these organ systems, and then each of these systems have separate organs that they belong in. Some of them, I think, have crossover too. So there's organs made up. Of, so the organs are made up of specific tissues. So if you go down a little bit level, you know, like heart tissue, muscle tissue from the heart is different than the tissue from, let's say you know, like your skin, right? It's different. And then below that cells, different cells in these tissues, right? And then the different kinds of cells and inside these cells are organelles, which is what I was talking about mitochondria earlier, right? And then under my, and then the next level down is chemical. So like cytoplasm, which I don't quite remember or understand. But that's essentially the main summary of chapter one. Um, I think for the most part, if you got that much, you should be fine. You just got to be able to kind of decipher a lot of the terminology, especially if you're not familiar with a lot of it, because it's going to really confuse you. Like, I don't even know what this means. Lysomes and peroxomomes. I mean, remember, the, the test is open book. I'm pretty sure it's open book. You can have your book open, you take it online, but the questions are very difficult, and it has a 70% uh, requirement. Um, so keep in mind, I got a 69. I got actually got a 50, like a 50 the first time, and a 69 the second time. So pissed off. So um, if you know anyone taking the test or you feel like this video would help them, please forward it to them, like it, share it, share it somewhere because I think that it would, uh, you know, it would help them uh, and also help me make more of these kind of videos because, um, you know, I like making these videos. If you are interested in the per Precision Nutrition Certification, take a look at the links below. Uh, they will kind of direct you to some information in case you're interested in kind of furthering your education. Uh, but um, if you have a question, leave a comment below, send me a message. Always best to interact with me through Facebook as I respond faster. Anywhere else, it's super slow because I just have too many things going on. Um, but um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.